Hey guys, welcome to Make Anything. I'm Devin, and a few weeks ago I shared this video where we made some really cool full color phone cases on a single extruder 3D printer using this technique of doing multiple passes with different colors on the first layer of the print and then printing the rest of the model on top of that. It ended up working really well, it got me super excited, and then people started sharing their use of the technique on Twitter and Instagram, and that got me more excited. So I really wanted to just keep pushing this idea to see how far I could take it. The biggest constraint with this technique is the fact that it really only works on the first one or two layers of the print before it becomes a real inconvenience. But I still wanted to see if it was possible to get a full color 3D model using this technique. And I, I've been exploring that over the past week or three. So today I'm gonna share my results so far. Let's do it. Cool. Before we jump right into this project, I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. If you're interested in honing your creative skills or running your own business, Skillshare is such a valuable resource. It's this online learning community with over 25,000 high quality lectures. And as a premium member, you have unlimited access. With the new year just around the corner, now is the perfect time to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even your career. Personally, I'll be using the opportunity to finally learn After Effects and other skills that'll help me improve the quality of my videos. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month, and the first 500 of my subscribers to follow the link in the description will get a two-month free trial. So you've got nothing to lose and a lot to learn. Check it out. All right. Let's get back to my video. Check out these simple dice that I printed out. They are simple, but they're also very cool for a number of reasons. As you can see, we've got a two color print here with some light blue and some transparent Matter Hackers Pro PLA. And you might notice a few things about this print that are particularly interesting. For one thing, each side here is completely smooth and we've got two colors on every single side and yet this was printed on a single extruder printer. The trick is that these dice don't come off the printer looking like this. Instead, they look like this. So what we have here is basically an unfolded die, and this is gonna be useful for a number of reasons. For one thing, it allows us to use that multicolor printing technique on just the one layer, but when we fold it all together, we still get colors on every single side. Another reason this is great for this purpose in particular is that it allows us to print every face of the die in the same way, in the same orientation, and that's gonna help us make a more balanced design. A common problem with printing dice on a 3D printer is that they may not come out completely balanced, but by unfolding it like this, I was able to design it in a way that each piece is gonna have the same weight essentially, and it's gonna be distributed equally across the whole die. As you can see on this side, we've got all these little tabs, and these are what allow us to snap everything into place. So I'm just gonna carefully start bending the faces. First, I'm gonna start with this loop, and then I'll just snap that into place. And then we've got the two sides that we can kind of press together like this. And after some satisfying snaps, everything is assembled into a nice, perfect die. I think these came out looking really cool, and while I haven't done any super intense testing yet, they do seem to be fairly well balanced. I also made some larger ones with some more intricate designs to really test out this technique. And these ones are really robust, and they're nearly solid inside, so they're really heavy and they feel great. They're a little bit big for actual gaming purposes and they could probably put a dent in a table so these ones are more decorative but they're definitely still super cool. These dice served as an awesome proof of concept because they showed that we can take this multiple color technique as well as this idea of folding prints and combine those to make true full color prints. And all the surfaces are also completely smooth which is just an added bonus. After my success with those cubes, I moved on to other polyhedra, starting with this tetrahedron. 
it's another one of those platonic solids, which means that all of the faces are the same shape and they all meet each other at the same angles. And this angle where these two meet internally is called the dihedral angle. And that ended up being really important because that's how I managed to design these internal clips that clip together and hold the shape. These dihedral angles will vary between different polyhedra and the numbers aren't always clean whole numbers, but luckily Wikipedia has a whole list of all those angles and it's just a great resource to learn all about these shapes in general. It took a lot of trial and error, but I discovered that the trick here was to make the taper angles of each face equal to the dihedral angle divided by two and subtracted from 90. With that value, you could extrude these to a point and when folded up, each point will meet right at the center of the polyhedron. Although in this case, we'll just make it one millimeter thick. I used that same angle to make sure that these clips snap together in the perfect position as well, but those details will have to wait for another video. Anyways, here's that dodecahedron printing out, and this is another one of those cool platonic solids. It's made up of 12 equal pentagonal faces. I cut these triangular holes in all the faces to give this model a kind of wireframe look. It saves material when printing, and I also just think it looks really interesting. These things are really satisfying, so I just kept designing different polyhedra. Here's a rhombic dodecahedron, and this one has some really cool hidden shapes, depending on how you look at it. Check out this crazy one. It's called a rhombic triacontahedron, and it's made up of 30 identical rhombic faces. Of all the shapes I modeled, though, my favorite has to be the icosahedron. It's just got this really pleasant shape, and it's made up of all these equilateral triangles. Now that I have a good handful of models for all these basic polyhedra, it's not too difficult for me to make little changes that end up creating drastically different looking models in the end. Here I took the dodecahedron and I created these hollow pyramids so that when it's all folded together, they all point inward towards the center of the shape and it just creates this really dramatic looking design. And you know, I heard you like dodecahedrons, so I put a dodecahedron inside of this dodecahedron, a so-called Now this one is just a basic dodecahedron and I didn't actually design this two color pattern. It's just the result of using a concentric infill in my slicer and switching out the filament halfway through the first layer. I did something similar with this next print, but I took the Bowden tube off of my Anycubic i3 Mega and I just filled it with all these little three inch sections of filament so before I even start the print, the whole Bowden tube is filled up with all these little sections of different colors of filament. I'm essentially manually splicing the filament. And then when it starts printing out, you'll see it just transitions between all these different colors. I finished it off by switching to white filament and that gave me this really unique hyper icosahedron. Another option is to just disable the top and bottom layers of your print so that the infill gets exposed like I did with this crazy rounded icosahedron using the wiggle infill in Simplify 3D. And here's a bunch of different ones I did using the same technique. Here's a simple but aesthetically pleasing rounded dodecahedron that I made using that multiple pass coloring technique. And with this pyramid icosahedron, I just did a standard filament swap after a couple of layers. Then there's this crazy one where I basically threw together all these different techniques. This is another triacontahedron that I modified to have this kind of spore-like sphere on the inside. It's a really wild looking one. As you can see, I went pretty crazy with these polyhedra, just testing more techniques, seeing what different shapes and variations I could come up with. 
And yet, this obsession is unrelenting. So I wanted to do more with it. I wanted to make some more things. Some thingy, some thingy things. So the next thing I did was make a kind of planetarium light using this dodecahedron shape. And I put a bunch of holes in it to match all the constellations and stars, a few shooting stars in there as well. And if you shine a light from the inside, you get a pretty cool projection of all those little dots. I still haven't found exactly the right LED to stick in here to get a nice, bright, clear, crisp projection. If anyone out there is a, like a lighting expert or has some suggestions, do share with me in the comments because I'd like to get some really cool projections using techniques like this. With this one, I used that concentric infill slicer setting again to get this really cool brushed metal looking finish with this vertigo gray PLA. Since this model is so big, I actually printed it in two halves and the second half ended up failing just before the clips actually printed. But instead of wasting the print, I decided to just use my 3D pen to hold the panels together and that ended up working really well. I'm actually kind of glad this happened because it's a great demonstration of repairing a 3D print using this 3D pen. The final thing that I really wanted to accomplish before posting this video is printing a polyhedron version of our planet Earth. So I referenced the Dimaction map projection created by legendary architect and designer Buckminster Fuller to create this icosahedron globe. Now I had several frustrating failures with this print because the panels kept breaking off and I realized it was because I was using old filament that had gone brittle. With these folding prints, it's a really good idea to use fresh filament or at least make sure that it's really nice and dry using lots of desiccant or a filament drying system like this print dry from Matter Hackers. This is basically just a repurposed food dehydrator, but it's got some special hardware that makes it easier to use while printing. Eventually, I did print a successful globe and I also made this little stand to go with it. So it actually just holds in place using tension so you just have to put these caps on the top and bottom. So we'll locate Antarctica. There it is. It's green because this is a projection of Earth in the year 2022. We'll place the other cap on the top point and then just lift this up and snap it into place. All right, there we have it. A really cute little model and definitive proof that Earth is an icosahedron. Here's another version I printed using that exposed infill technique to create this kind of mesh globe. And I also created this little stand with an LED inside of it to place underneath this globe that was printed using translucent filaments. Lastly, I wanted to test out the giant build volume of my Anycubic Chiron 3D printer. So I printed this 175% scale version of the globe, and it's super cool. All right, so this is where we're at in terms of this whole combination of techniques. I think it's going in a really cool direction. There's so much that can be done. I'm already swarming with ideas. You know, I want to take my 3D printed fabric and make panels and make a shape out of that. I want to make disco balls, lithophane lights. There's so much that can be done. I want to hear your guys' ideas too, so please share in the comments. By the way, full disclosure, I'm not claiming to have invented these techniques. So people have been doing multiple color prints. People have been doing foldable prints. It's more a matter of bringing many ideas together and creating new things based on that. That's kind of how creativity works. I just wanna see how far we can take this together. So please share any ideas you guys have. If you guys wanna download and print these for yourselves, please check out my My Mini Factory page. All of these designs will be available to download, many for free, others for a very affordable price. I'd love for you to share your prints as well. My Mini Factory has an app that's getting really good at this point and I wanna see your different color combinations and stuff you guys come up with. 
All right, well, that's it for today. I hope you guys like where I'm going with this. And if you want to follow along, make sure you're subscribed. Maybe even hit that little bell, that little, you know, do all that stuff. And I'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Devin. And of course, don't forget to stay inspired. <laughs>